First outing with the Ruger Service 6. First shot was in the center. The last two are there and there. And the only reason there's three holes there is the fourth shot ended up with a squib. So we're going to try and get it out with a piece of 5 16 hardwood rod. We'll cut it down to length. And then our backup is going to be a bolt that we'll probably have to put some shrink wrap on. So hopefully we won't have to go this route. I'm hoping the wood rot with a mallet will get her out. But we're going to have to take the gun apart first. I'm just going to come down in here with a rod and just release the lower trigger pin retainer. And this should just pop it right out. Oop. The guys are a little tricky. There we go. Oop. Keep slipping it off. There we go. And then I'll lower the trigger out. There's the trigger assembly. I just dinged up this. Uh, that's all right. And then we'll uh, take this out. And this should come right out. There we go. We lost those parts right there. That's good. We just don't want to lose any pieces. Now we got this thing down to where we can... Um, we'll cut this rod to fit. That way we go in here and we're pounding on this. We're not going to ding up any of the gun or be smacking the, the cylinder around. There we go, it's a good shot of the squib. We were shooting 38 special, and these were hand loads, four grades, uh, I think, uh, the Hogden tight, grain, tight group. And uh, it was uh, only the first, I think it was the fourth shot uh, on the gun since we got it. We bought it from uh, Buds online. I'd been watching Hickok 45, and he had one. I thought, well, I'd like to get one. And uh, it's a real uh, Ruger Police Service 6. And it's, uh, uh, these were turn-ins from the, uh, I guess, a police department in Australia was the story. And that's the importer. I guess they have to put their mark on it. Out of Hoshton, Georgia, GDM. And I looked that up. I think that stands for Global Defense Management. But anyway, we'll walk this out to the, uh, the shop where we got a vise and a couple blocks of wood. We'll secure this, cut this rod to length, and then we'll see if we can just smack it out with a mallet. All right, we're just going to take it and uh, set it in the vise. We don't want to pinch anything we, we don't want to hurt. Uh, we'll set her in kind of straight. Make sure I'm not pinching my release note. And that ought to get a good bite. I don't think that's hurting anything. Nope. I think I did uh, punch holes in the wood with the, uh, the grip pins. But that's okay. That's not going to go anywhere. Just don't want that falling out when we hit it. Let's see if we can get this out with a wooden dowel. Gosh, I hope I can get that out with a wooden dowel. I'm going to sand the end off a little bit. And we bought this at uh, Home Depot. This is a 516. It says hardwood. I wanted oak. And it said made in Vietnam. So, yeah, I'm guessing it's probably not that hard. I'm just going to come over here. Um, is my hand in the way when I do that? Can you still see the squib? Okay, let's see if I can just, just knock that out with a mallet. There we go. Desquibbed. There it is. You know, that thing looks good enough. I think we could clean that up and reload it. <laughs> hey, and just showing a little light down the barrel. Um, obviously, there's some polish marks there where I ran the dial down there, but obviously soft wood. And uh, looking down the barrel, um, she looks pretty good. I'm trying to give you a good view. Probably work better if I had light shining on the back of it or something. But it came out clean. It's trying to come in on this end. Maybe all you can see it good there. 
no, no harm done. This this gun is fine, and uh, the uh, two by fours dug into my uh, my grip pins, and uh, that probably helped keep it from sliding out. But it didn't didn't hurt anything, and uh, of course there ain't a whole lot you can do to this one. This one <laughs> this one was pretty rough, but she was shooting good until we got a squib, and that's the first time I don't know how many. Uh, thousands of rounds I've shot in my life. I, I've never had that happen before. That's the first time that's ever happened. So and I'm pretty sure it was the ammo and not the gun. The gun feels great. The gun was shooting nice. Yeah, after examining the barrel, it doesn't even look like it needs to be cleaned. There's there's no residue left from that squib. It came out clean. So we're just going to just put it back together. I think we're good to go. So I'm going to take my uh, wheel stopper thingy. And put it whoop no it doesn't go in that hole let's try that again put that right there just like that then we take our cylinder assembly and it's going to go in here like this just like that and see how that's going to push against that like that and I can index that in just like that that'll go right in I'm going to take my trigger assembly and you want to make sure that that little thing that looks like a cowboy boot this thing right here i'm going to make sure that it hasn't slipped out because there's a little spring in there and if that pops out then uh then you get a problem but it's in there we'll just leave it and when this goes in i'm going to take the um that's the um what do they call it the firing pin bar um we want to get that to not tuck underneath we want it to go on top then ratchet that in and when I push this in I want to be real careful not to get my fingers in between here ask me how I know these are razor sharp so you just want to take your thumbs like this and pull it in if it'll go gotta make sure that that hammer or that uh, cylinder arm I want to make sure that goes in like it's supposed to it feels like it's gonna go just take this and just push it just like that. It goes right in. And you'll know if you got it, if it's in right, because this should just pull. See that? That's working nice and smooth. Now the next thing to do is to get the hammer back in. And that's just going to drop in like this. And you just pull the trigger a little bit to get her to set down in there. You'll know when this holes, these two holes are lined up. You just pull the trigger a little bit. Get her to come down in there. Usually get it first time unless I'm filming. There we go. She's in. Then we just take our trigger pin. It goes in just like that. And then we get it to line up. You just gotta wiggle it around a little bit and it'll slide right in. There we go. That's in. That's back together. Of course, it feels really smooth now. <laughs> because there's no there's no trigger spring so we got to put this back in and that's just gonna slide up in here like that butter fingers right there oh I'm just betting a thousand today Go back in there. Usually it just drops right in. What have I been doing wrong? Oh. Hmm. 
that's usually the easiest part. I can see where it pivots. I don't know why it just won't drop in there. Something's wrong. Let's try it again. Oh, I forgot. Once you load the pin, you're, you're supposed to put the hammer back down. Dummy. Okay. Okay. Gee, that works a lot better now. Just like that. And now cock it. Okay, now I can let that pin fall out. And that pin, when I put the handles back on, goes right in here. So that way it's always there when you need it. So that should be working just fine. We'll check the action on it. Yep, that's working good. All right, all I gotta do is put the handles on and, uh, and she's done. Am I smart enough to get the handles on the right side? Jeez. There we go. Set the handles on. Like so. Pin still in there. It'll just fit right on so nice. Those are new grips. They fit good. All I gotta do is put my screw in. We're good to go. I am using a hollow point blade, even though this is just a handle. Um, I use a not hollow point, uh, hollow ground. They call it hollow ground blades. Any of these insert style, you'll notice they're ground flat. They're not tapered like a regular screwdriver. And these are the kind you want to use when you work on a firearm, so you don't booger up the the uh, the slotted screws. Not a huge deal. Okay, she's desquibbed and ready for action.